Welcome to another, now with haircut, uh, video in chapter two, Nature of Code. What I have done so far, using the classical laws of motion, classical mechanics, force equals mass times acceleration, I've implemented a system where mover objects can receive forces as vectors and have those forces control how they move about a canvas in P5.js. But the way that I have created these force vectors is just by picking numbers out of a hat and I want to do something more. The formula that I want to start with is the formula for friction. Now there are many different kinds of friction and examples of friction, and there's static friction, which is friction that holds something in place and uh, not moving, versus kinetic friction, which is the friction that occurs when two surfaces are in moving in contact with each other. Here's the diagram that I have to describe the a friction force in the Nature of Code book itself. I'm going to take a minute to rewrite that formula over here. The approach I like to take when finding a formula like this and then trying to figure out how to apply it in code is to unpack each of the elements of the formula one at a time and figure out whether it actually applies or is in fact something that we can ignore to simplify in the case of our sort of 2D P5 canvas. So one, let's, let's, I'm going to go in sort of an arbitrary order here, but something really to note here is what is this? This is the velocity unit vector. Why are we doing this? Let's consider I have this circle at the bottom of the canvas. It's moving in this direction. That's its current velocity. And I want to describe what is the direction of friction. Well, the direction of friction is, and this negative one is really important, these two go together. The direction of friction is a vector in the opposite direction of velocity. Circling back for a second, what am I doing again? I'm calculating a force, a vector, and I need to figure out two things, direction and magnitude. The direction here is expressed as the unit vector pointing in the velocity's direction times negative one. So I know that the friction points in this direction. That's the friction force. What is the magnitude? Well, I have two other variables in this formula. And all of these, by the way, are scalars. Scalar, 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 and this is the vector. This is known as mu, or the coefficient of friction. <laughs> Let's play a little knock-knock joke together. Knock-knock. Who's there? The interrupting coefficient of friction. The interrupting. Mu! <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. Coefficient of friction is a value that describes the strength of the friction force based on what material it is. You could imagine if this is like ice and this is an ice skate, there's going to be a lot less friction. That ice skate will glide across the ice versus this is sandpaper and this is some other kind of rough material and there's a much greater amount of friction. So the coefficient of friction is tied specifically to the material itself and, and what well, its behavior as, they come, as it comes into contact. Then we have something interesting here. This, the normal force. To describe the normal force, let me refer back to the diagram. This diagram has a sled in contact with a hill. And there's also the force of gravity. The force of gravity is a force pointing directly down towards the center of the Earth and causing the sled to kind of rub in, in with the hill as it comes move and as it comes down. The normal force is the force perpendicular to the two surfaces in contact. And its magnitude is tied to the this component of the gravity force, uh, the component that is perpendicular to the hill. But guess what? None of that really matters. <laughs> what, I, what I've got to say is, all, I mean, all this is like super important in real world physics. But let me remind you what we're doing here. I have a ellipse, a piece of graphics drawn on a two dimensional canvas coming into contact with the edge of the canvas. So there is a normal force pointing straight down in my world that I'm sort of looking at the, I'm looking at a slice of a three dimensional world in a way. Um, there is a normal force, but what its magnitude is, is something that I could just make up. It's some kind of constant in this case. Quick clarification, N is not a constant in the sense that it depends on the weight, which depends on the object's mass. So for different objects, that relative amount of friction would be different because their weights would be different. But in the case of one particular object, I can treat it as a constant here and scale it according to that object's mass. 
I'm going to simplify this again to just have one object. So as I add the code for friction into it, I'm not dealing with multiple objects. OK, so I have my single object bouncing up and down. I'm going to invent a kind of artificial scenario where I want this mover to only experience friction when it comes in contact with the bottom surface of the canvas. So anytime it is in contact with the bottom surface, it'll experience friction. To make this happen, I'm going to write a new function in the mover called friction. I'll check to see how far is it away from the bottom. I want to know how far is it from the bottom. So I want to know the difference between the height and its position plus the radius. Because remember, the position, the y position is the center. So I want to look at the edge in contact with the bottom. I will say it's in contact if that difference is within one pixel. So let's just run the sketch. Let me call the function friction. And let's see if when it comes in contact with the edge, we get the word friction here in the console. So we can see every time it bounces, we're seeing the word friction. And now we can see as it's rolling along the bottom, friction, 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 because it's in constant contact with the surface. Maybe I would want to treat the scenario when it like hits the surface once versus is rolling along the surface differently, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. The live chat that's watching me record this video right now is also pointing out that things would be quite different if my surface were at an angle. Um, so uh, how, well, how the normal force would be calculated relative to the force of gravity. That's why I'm happy about this simple scenario of this sort of flat surface along the bottom. Let me first get the direction of the friction force. I need the velocity vector normalized to length 1 multiplied by negative 1. Let me copy the velocity vector. Let me normalize it and reverse its direction. Now that I have the direction, I need the magnitude. What is the magnitude? The coefficient of friction, mu, times the strength of the normal force. The normal force is proportional to the weight, which is scaled by the mass of the object. So I can use mass in my calculation. And then mu can be a, a value that I make up. Let's say 0 0.1. The normal force will be equal to the mass. And then I can say force set magnitude mu times normal. Once again, Anytime I'm calculating a force, I need to both figure out its direction, a normalized vector here pointing in the opposite direction of velocity, and its magnitude. The coefficient of friction, a value I'm making up, times the strength of the normal force, which is some value scaled according to mass. What do I do next? Apply the force. And I'm realizing I want to call this friction. Let's run this and see what happens. It came to a stop. How delightful. Now that this is working, this is a nice moment for me to take a minute and just add an array so we can see a bunch of these all with different masses and see how they behave within the same environment. So let me quickly add that in. Here you can see I am making 10 mover objects. Everyone will start with a y position at 200, but each will start at a random x position and with a random mass, some value between 1 and 8. Also might make sense for me to make this mu variable a global variable, just so I can play with it um, outside of in the interior of the class itself. Um, I'm going to leave it up there. And then inside draw, this is a nice opportunity for, for me to use a for of loop, because I want to say for every mover, of, it's, I can't, it's hard to say the word of when you're describing. It's really like for each or for in really makes sense. But the loop that I want in JavaScript is for of. I have a whole other video about that. But I want to look at every single mover inside of the movers array. And one way of doing that is for every mover of movers, run all of this code. And let's take a look and see what happens. Now they're all bouncing together. They hit the bottom at a slightly different time. They should all respond to wind differently based on their size, not their mass. Um, and then they'll all also have their own friction according that's scaled according to their mass as well. And after a little while, all of them will roll to a stop. Does this feel 
accurate? Does this, what does this feel like? Well, I suspect that by playing around with the coefficient of friction, the relative strength of the weight, the gravitational force, all of these things, all of these variables you can tune to have the simulation feel more or less like different kinds of material in different kinds of environments. So while here I am attempting to actually write a code that uses the formula for friction in the real world, I could also do this with a very quick and dirty algorithm that I think it's worth showing you um, just at the sort of tail end of this video. Ultimately, what friction does is it takes a little bit off of the velocity every single frame. We lose some speed as this object is coasting along a particular surface. The friction slows it down. Another way to lose a little bit of velocity with each and every uh, step in time would be to just take a percentage of velocity off. I could comment all of this out and just say this dot velocity multiply 0.95, meaning shrink the velocity vector every time step, if it's in contact with the, with the edge, with the bottom surface, by 5%. And let's just see if this has the same result. In the end, it's pretty similar. They all come rolling to a stop. Did you notice though that they all seem to come rolling to a stop at exactly the same moment? Well, that's because one flaw with this particular uh, method is that I'm not taking into account the object's mass. So, you know, for just having things sort of slow down over time, this might be a really easy way to do it. If you want to make sure that that force, that friction force is scaled to mass, then maybe doing it the vector way is. Then one is not inherently better than the other. These are just different ways to produce the same kind of effect. So this wraps up this very basic demonstration of coding a friction force into a simple 2D physics simulation. There's a lot that you could try before you move, we move on to the next video. So we'll try these things as an exercise. I wrote them all down. One is, it's pretty arbitrary that I decided to have this sideways view of the world. I'm taking a slice, a two-dimensional slice, and things are falling up and down and moving left and right. What if what I were actually looking at was a top-down view of a 2D world? So I'm actually overhead, maybe a billiards table, and lots of things are rolling around this surface and experiencing friction. How might what you code change? But if I were to stay in this world that's the vertical slice, what if I wanted, instead of having a horizontal surface at the bottom, to actually have a sloped surface within the frame, and the, my objects are falling down and maybe rolling down this particular surface. How would, I ha how would I have the force of gravity behave and how would I have the force of friction behave? Truthfully, the material that you need to do this is coming in chapter three, where I'm going to look at angles and polar coordinates and things like a pendulum simulation. So some of the ways that you would calculate a force perpendicular to a non-horizontal, perfectly horizontal surface are coming soon. But if you maybe want to look ahead or experiment with how to do that, I try that as an exercise. I am completely ignoring the difference between static friction, what's the friction that's holding something in place when it's not moving versus kinetic friction, that friction when it's in motion. That might be something you consider folding into this particular example. Can you demonstrate those two differences? And then finally, I think this visualization would be so much more sort of compelling or illustrative if I were to actually draw the various vectors. Could I draw the velocity vector as well as vector, draw uh, visual representations of all the forces? So could I see the, a drawing of the friction force, the gravitational force, uh, the wind force, all those other forces within the simulation itself. So if you try any of those and you make your own version of them, please go to the URL that's in this video's description where you can share uh, your variation. I would love to check them out and maybe also show them in a future uh, video or live stream where I sometimes show uh, community contributions from the website. Now I have two more case studies to look at related to forces. One, in the next video, is very similar to friction. I'm actually going to look at a drag force, uh, air resistance. So what happens when something a, a body is falling through the air. How does, how, what, what sort of force acts on it? Or a body is moving through a liquid. So that's known as drag or a fluid resistance. I'm gonna look at that force in the next video. And finally, I wanna circle all the way back and look at that first example I made when I looked at acceleration of this object being attracted to the mouse and make a version of that but use the actual formula for gravitational attraction itself. So uh, just a couple more videos left in this chapter two and we'll be moving on to chapter three and I hope you're enjoying it and all that stuff. See you soon.